Okay, it's officially the start of orb number two. So we are bringing in some some of our parts machines. We've already gutted out a couple of parts machines, so we've got things. We got stuff. We've got our base cart for uh, the bottom. So uh, this time, our goals are to make one that folds more flat so it can be put in the back of an SUV. Um, unit number one, although it worked awesome, it needs to be hauled in the pickup truck, really. Um, it's kind of doesn't fold up, so we need to try and, and fix that issue. Also, unit number one, we worked and worked to get it to just shy of 36 inches wide, thinking that'd be great to get in a commercial door. However, the door opening is 36 inches, but then you have the thickness of the door wherever you're at. So we're gonna try and make this one like in the 34 inch wide range or less, so that hopefully it'll be easy to get in and out of commercial doors. And uh, other than that, I think the power concept of it worked really well using the, uh, the Milwaukee battery, the variable speed controller, the momentary on switches, that stuff all worked great. Um, so we're gonna try and reutilize those ideas as much as possible and the high flotation tires, obviously. So, um, but yeah, this is what we got. The other boys will be here momentarily. We're gonna get started. Rods out, got the old axle out. Now we gotta see if we got another axle and if the hole size is similar. Step one. This is a custom lathe that uh, Chris and Lane have come up with on uh, orb building. <laughs> anyway, the uh, steaks and the potatoes are seven minutes from done. So, uh, you know, wash up and come inside shortly. The camaraderie of working on the orb is good and all, but sometimes you gotta feed them too. So we're trying to gut this little bracket. Um, so the bracket was here and it was facing this way. So we had to put our motors facing forward. Unfortunately, then the motor hangs way too close to the ground. So we really want the motor facing backwards like we did on uh, orb number one, which means we had to knock that bracket out try and take this extra crap off of it that was for the brake system. We're gonna remount the bracket this direction, re-rivet it into place, and then put the axle through with the end motors sticking upwards on the back. Um, yeah, so these guys are working on that. Uh, meanwhile, these guys are working on gutting some of the uh, extra carts here. So just parts and stuff, anything we can use, we can make use of, and uh, we're plugging away. Through quiet stores, these straight cut gears and these planetaries are really loud. What we've noticed taking apart is all the grease, and you can hear the noise of it. So, what we did is all the grease was squeezed out of the gears, and uh, so we went through on the first one, split it, and just re greased all the teeth, and it is so much quieter. So, we'll grease it and show it after. Oh, yeah, not bad at all. No. Oh. That'd be cool. That's I like it. I mean, we know the motors work, so. Yeah. Um, so I think we're kind of good. We need to figure out how to modify the axle width. So uh, we've kind of spaced it out with some washers and stuff on both sides and like some little spacer thing. Cause we're gonna have to figure out, we're gonna have to narrow the axle slightly, but this is 31 inches wide, which is awesome. That's gonna get us through doors much easier. This is gonna be the perfect width to, uh, to work. Um, Chris has taken apart these uh, motors and uh, re-greased the gears. They're way quieter than they were before, which would be nice. Um, so we're going to have to probably cut the axle in the middle. We'll splice it back together, weld it, switch the correct width so we can get the center caps back on the wheels. And then, uh, yeah, 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know if these rubber tires are enough for the front. We probably want something with a little more flotation, so we're gonna need to figure that out. Um, but we're making some headway. First night progress is looking good. Cut that axle, figure out the length, slide her back in there and weld her up. We're gonna start a pencil. Yeah, like that. So we got the axle kind of tack, tacked together. The welder's out of gas, so we'll have to get that filled up tomorrow. So we're ready for next time. But uh, just testing our length, seeing if our fit is correct. And uh, another night of orb work. Can't have building progress without some yummy food. All right, so we have welded up our axle shaft to our new narrowed size that we need. And now we're gonna drill some holes and put bolts through. We need some sort of a shim to keep the motor. Let me slide this on here so you guys see what we're talking about. So the motor slides on the shaft and it, it has some play and it rocks pretty heavy against the frame. And we'd, we'd like to eliminate that, so we're gonna put a bolt through to kind of space the motor to lock it against one side so that it won't rock back and forth. So uh, Lane just went out and grabbed some hardware and we are going to get that done. Okay, so Dio found that if we under drill the size, just a fuzz, you can actually just thread your screw right into the, the tubular framework of this thing and you got a nice solid fit. This thing just barely wiggles. So that's exactly what we were looking for. We'll get the wheels on it and uh, just kind of loosely put the back axle together for now. So over here, we've taken apart the uh, original orb because um, the motors are super loud. So these guys are uh, greasing up the gears and the motors for the original orb. Kirk and Steve are working on cutting up the spindles for the uh, new orb based off of our measurements from the original um, because we're using the exact same front tire. And then Dustin is working on um, changing. So the original orb was a little wide to get through a uh, 36 inch door. Um, so we dug through the parts bins and we found these narrower drive cogs that we're gonna rivet to the wheels, um, which is gonna narrow the overall width of this one by three inches. Should be a lot easier to get in and out of other doors, um, which is really cool. And then we've also um, figured out a way to uh, change some hardware so that we can pull a pin and lower the height of it overall so we can get it in the back of his wife's SUV. And then we're gonna work on um, moving the speed control switch somewhere where you can access it while you're already pulling the trigger to just roll it with a thumb. Right now, um, uh, some of the ladies are having issues because their fingers aren't long enough to adjust the speed while on the fly. And so adjusting it and then testing it and adjusting it and testing it's kind of hard and it, and it jerks uh, jerks the kids around in the seat. So we don't want to do that. So yeah, just uh, plugging away. We got two of them going and uh, kind of perfecting the first one and using all the skills that we learned to build the second one. Things are happening. All right. So with our new narrower stance, this thing should be really easy to get in and out of doors. And it is much quieter thanks to those guys greasing the gearboxes. All we have left to do the original orb is see if we can remount that speed controller and this thing should be dialed. So we got lots going on. We got the control panel off of the original orb and we're drilling some holes and moving switches. Gonna move the speed controller. We got that going on with one guy. We got other guys over here. We're working handlebar controls, trying to figure this stuff out. Um, trying to formulate a plan to maybe make 
Orb number two, uh, a tri-tire unit, a uh, tricycle style, as opposed to four-tire unit. Um, it's gonna maybe work out a little better. We'll see. Uh, with four tires, the, tire, the front tires are so big, it might be hard to fold the unit up like we need to. With a single middle tire in the front, it may be easier to fold up. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We're playing with ideas. It's gonna work or it's not, either way, it's cool. So yeah, lots going on. Everybody's pitching in, trying to figure stuff out. Okay. Orb number one for the night completed. So um, now have uh, the triggers like you did before. However, the speed controller is right here at your thumb. So you can be pulling and adjusting at the same time, which is perfect. It's exactly what we needed. And um, I think this one's done. So it's new width. It's like 31 inches wide, which is awesome. It should fit through most doors with ease. We have the um, pins um, so we can remove these and drop the height of it. So the overall height, um, you can fold these, the upper handle portion back by pressing these buttons on either side. Um, of course, doing it one handed, it goes one click at a time, but, but by folding that down and pulling these pins and dropping this down, the overall height of it's low enough that you can fit it in the back of a mom's SUV. So this is perfect. This thing worked out really, really well. Now we gotta get some more parts for this one. Orb number two, I think the tripod wheel setup is gonna work great. Uh, we're gonna get some angle iron and a flat needle roller bearing setup for the center. Um, and keep going on that one. So that one is also the right width. So I think that's gonna be sweet. We did do some welding. We got uh, handlebars kind of mocked up here. Um, we're gonna drill and bolt that. We've got two pieces. So we can kind of bolt and clamp that to the existing handlebars to get the, the height up where it's comfortable for the person walking behind it. And then uh, we got our spindle set up kind of mocked up and made here for the, uh, for the unicycle for the front. So yeah, lots going on, making good progress. Can't wait to get these boys in their carts.